healthy. I hope you all are staying healthy. Today we will see everything important about time series analysis. We will see what are time series data, stationary and non-stationary in time series analysis, random walk model, unit root test, Dickey Fuller and augmented Dickey Fuller test and we will also see important model of time series analysis like autoregressive and distributed lag model. So let's start it. What do you mean by time series data? Time series data focus on single individual, subject or entities but at different time period. Time series data focus on single individual, subject or entities but at different time period. That means we collect data about same variable but at different point of time such as uh, monthly, quarterly, weekly, yearly, etc. For example, here we have information about 5 years profit. Our subject is the uh, same. We are only collecting data about profit. But time period are different. So it will be called time series data. And time series analysis always uses time series data to identify trends, uh, seasonal patterns and uh, cycles in order to forecast future patterns. For example, time series analysis important method to study about business cycle. It involves to collect data at regular interval in order to understand cyclical fluctuation in economy. First of all, we will see stationary in time series. In case of stationary in time series, mean variance and autocorrelation will not change. They will remain constant. In case of stationary in time series, mean Variance and autocorrelation will not change. They will remain constant regardless of when data is observed. That means for time series to be stationary, three conditions must be satisfied. First is constant mean. That means average value of series will not change. It will remain constant. Constant variance. Dispersion of data point will not change. It will remain constant. Constant autocorrelation. Relationship between observation at different uh, lag does not change, it will remain constant. So, for time series to be stationary, these three conditions must be satisfied. Now, we will see non stationary series. In case of non stationary series, mean, variance, and autocorrelation will not remain constant, they will change over the time period. In case of non stationary series, mean variance and autocorrelation will change over the time period and random walk model is important example of non stationary time series random walk model is important example of non stationary time series because in case of random walk model mean variance change over the time period and random walk model consists infinitive memory that means in case of random walk model, past information never fade away. And we can present random walk model by two ways. First is random walk model without drift. Second random walk model with the drift. This is random walk model without drift. Yt is value of time series at t time period. Yt minus 1 value of time series at previous time period. If t time period is 2005, then t minus 1 will be called 2004 because t minus 1 is the value of a previous time period and et is an error term and this is a random walk model with the drift. Here d represent drift. If drift is positive, then model shows upward trend positive relationship. If drift is negative, then model shows downward relationship means negative relationship. Now we will see unit root test. We use a unit root test in order to know whether our time series is stationary or non-stationary. We use a unit root test in order to know whether our time series is stationary or non-stationary. If our time series contain a unit root, that means our time series is not stationary. Please listen carefully. If our time series contain a unit root, that means our time series is not stationary. Its mean variance change over the time period. And a Dickey Fuller test and augmented Dickey Fuller test are type of unit root test. That means we use Dickey Fuller test in order to know presence of a unit root in our time series. 
as we know in order to do any test first of all we prepare null hypothesis null hypothesis in case of dicky fuller test shows unit root is present that means null hypothesis in case of dicky fuller test shows our time series is non stationary if you accept your null hypothesis that means confirm unit root is present and our time series is non stationary but if you reject your null hypothesis that means your time series is stationary an augmented uh, dicky fuller test is extension of dicky fuller test because augmented dicky fuller test handle more complex and high order regressive process now we will see difference between dicky fuller test and augmented dicky fuller test we use dicky fuller test to know presence of uh, unit uh, root we use dicky fuller test to know presence of uh, unit uh, root similar we use augmented dicky fuller test to know presence of unit root but this is more advanced and reliable for complex time series data and dicky fuller test use single lagged term dicky fuller test use single lag terms here you can see we have only one lag term but Uh, augmented dicky fuller test use multiple lag terms here you can see we have so many lag terms t minus 1 t minus 2 t minus 3 uh, till t minus n so augmented dicky fuller uh, test use a multiple lag term we use dicky fuller model means dicky fuller model is suitable for simple time series model but augmented dicky fuller model we use for complex time series model which dicky fuller cannot uh, handle now we will see two important model of time series analysis auto regressive model and distributed lag model auto regressive model predict future value of variable based on past value of same variable auto regressive model predict future value of variable based on past value of same variable that means auto regressive model predict future or current value of dependent variable based on past value of dependent variable for example you predict current sale based on past sale data that's why auto regressive model takes lag of a dependent variable not independent variable this is equation of auto regressive model yt is our dependent variable and here we have lag of dependent variable yt minus 1 yt minus 2 because auto regressive model predict current value of dependent variable based on past value of dependent variable that's why in case of auto regressive model we take lag of dependent variable not independent variable on the other hand distributed lag model uses past value of independent variable in order to predict the current value of dependent variable distributed lag model uses past value of independent variable in order to predict the current or future value of dependent variable for example in order to predict the current consumption we will take data of a past income here income is independent variable consumption is dependent variable that's why distributed lag model take lag of independent variable not dependent variable so this is our dependent variable and here we have lag of independent variable xt minus 1 xt minus 2 so main difference between distributed lag model and auto regressive model is that auto regressive model take lag of dependent variable but a distributed lag model take lag of independent variable now we will see difference between auto regressive model and distributed lag model we use auto regressive model when current or you can say that future observation depend on past observation we use auto regressive model when current or future observation depend on past observation for example current consumption depend on past consumption future sale depend on past sale and linear regression analysis associated with the auto regressive model and we use distributed lag model when independent variable effect dependent variable over multiple time period not immediately we use distributed lag model when independent variable effect dependent variable over multiple period not immediately 
For example, we use distributed lag model in order to know how a new tax policy influences the consumption of people for coming so many years. And COEC approach is associated with the distributed lag model and we have already discussed about COEC approach. So this is all about uh, time series analysis. I think you got it and thank you so much for watching this video. Bye. Take care.